everybody, and it's David with No Chaser, and I've been out for a little bit just because I've been feeling kind of under the weather, and, you know, usually when I'm under the weather, I just don't feel like really doing anything, but um, since I've been sick, I've had this kind of urge to drink, and it's strange, but, you know, it reminds me of something, and this is for today's topic, is that you never really know when you'll get the urge to drink. I remember when I hit a year of sobriety, one of my first thoughts was, I should celebrate this with a drink, which is pretty insane. But I've also had it during other times, you know. Usually you think of the bad times as that's when you get an urge to drink, when things aren't going well or some major life event happens, but also when good things occur, you know. Like I remember when I graduated college, I wanted to celebrate with a drink, even though I'd been sober for a while too. You know, there's during times when I had a birthday and like if I have a bad birthday, um, I can understand the, the impulse to drink. But I had a particularly good one one time. And again, I'd been sober for a while and I wanted a drink. And that day I actually did. It was one of my relapses. And it's just kind of crazy what the mind will do, like as far as when you get the, again, the craving or the urge to to drink it doesn't have any rhyme or reason to it too because you know i've like i said i've had plenty of bad times where you'd expect me to want to drink and i didn't have really any sort of urges at all maybe the thought was there but then during really good times just i remember one particular day when everything was going right i got a you know i had a pretty good day at work um it wasn't a major event to celebrate either like i can also i know that for a lot of people where the urge to celebrate something, you know, you want to drink, but it, I, I had a pretty good day one time. My work went well. Um, I spent quality time with my significant other and everything was going pretty good. I got some writing done. You know, I just felt really accomplished in a sense. Um, you know, again, nothing too major though, but just a, a pretty good day. And I wanted to drink. And that was another time where I had relapsed. And it's so hard to predict when your brain will tell you, hey, you should drink right now, or when a craving comes on. You know, that's the other thing. Some of these times I mentioned, I, I guess I didn't just have the urge to drink. I did severe craving, too. And so I, that's one thing I've learned, you know, kind of over the years and with some of my failures is that I just, you know, it can seem tiring or just annoying, irritating, but, you know, it's so important to be hypervigilant. Um, you know, as far as like the, you know, keeping your recovery up and just being aware that, like I said, at least in your first year of sobriety, um, you'll just get these urges to drink that, or sometimes cravings that don't follow any rules. So like sometimes I, like after I had a considerable amount of sobriety, um, I had plenty of bad days, some bad life events happened. And I, I didn't really have too big of a, of a obsession or a craving to drink. So I thought things were finally, you know, slowing down as far as the obsession goes. Because I, I, I've been pretty bad with, you know, some people, they lose um, their, their urges and thoughts and obsession after, you know, a couple of months. They'll still have one flare up every once in a while, but they'll lose it. But, you know, for me, it's just been such a difficult journey because... I've had, you know, months and months of sobriety and it's been just like it was, I was in month one. Sometimes it, it's been as bad as like I was in day two, um, you know? And so, like I said, it can just get really frustrating. Um, but that frustration should, it should really be more so of just a, a fear, but a, like a healthy fear. And that fear is a good way to, like I said, drive the sort of like vigilance you need over basically how unpredictable that your mind can be you know it just me trying to like there's obviously patterns that follow in my life like you know as far as like relapse goes i notice there are certain things that when i start doing them i'll be more susceptible to drinking you know like if i isolate um if i start just letting my you know going to meetings and stuff like that talking to people if that like starts to slip you know or just not doing basic behaviors well you know having a poor sleep um, schedule, uh, overeating, um, you know, just not exercising or, or just eating right, you know, not even the overeating, but just not eating very well. Um, 
those can all be factors and they've proven themselves uh, as far as like when I'm susceptible to a relapse. But the, the way the mind works though, when I get these sort of, uh, you know, crazy ideas that come up, I never know when those things will occur. You know, they're like, they don't even occur more when I was talking about those things, the negative behaviors that lead to a relapse. They don't even occur more often. It's just when they do occur, I'm more susceptible to it. Um, and it's just, it's strange. Things can be going well, and then just out of the blue, you're hit with um, a sort of intense craving that could be followed by, you know, maybe days or even a, like a week of sort of the obsession of the mind, you know. And I, I, I do this, and it's more important to try to combat these things when they when they come up. But some of them are so acute or they happen so suddenly that it just, like I said, it kind of blindsides you. And I, you know, like I said, I was, I'd been sick and, you know, normally when I've been sick, there's actually been days where I've been sick where I'd been stuck in kind of a drinking cycle. But when I was sick, I actually used those days because I was too tired, too out of it to drink. I still wanted to, but I was like, you know what, let's use this as a good jumping off point. You know, just lay in, in bed, try to recuperate, drink plenty of fluids, all that type of stuff. Try to eat as much, you know, as much as you can, as healthy as you can. And let's just pretend that, you know, that, you know, it, like I was kind of like one of those things where I was like, I feel like I'm going through detox. So why not just actually detox? And those those were, you know, those sick times were actually times that like I was able to build up a you know, a good run of sobriety just from that. And so when I was sick this time. I thought, you know, I've, I've still been sober, um, so I thought this would be a good way to just kind of prolong it. Like I said, do this same sort of behaviors of just, um, you know, get plenty of rest, um, maybe not too much, you know, stay on a good sleeping cycle, but get rest too. Not just sleeping, but actual rest. Um, try to eat something healthy just to, you know, not only just to, you know, be good for my sobriety, but just also kind of heal from the sickness, you know, just those standard behaviors that even normal people do. And I thought this would just kind of be that case, you know, but no, it was, it's been, it's been a struggle. I've been, you know, maybe it's because I've just been laying in bed. Um, you know, I haven't been super active or anything. I actually, maybe I shouldn't have, but I, I went into work one of these days and, um, you know, work wasn't too terribly bad. It was just working when I was sick, you know. Like I said, I don't have COVID or anything, or I definitely don't have the flu. You know, when I have the flu, I'm, like, incapacitated completely. But, you know, just kind of like a sinusy cold. Um, you know, I've been taking the over-the-counter medication as needed, you know. And I, I refrain from taking anything like uh, NyQuil or anything like that, or even, like, Benadryls. Like, I don't want anything to knock me out or just get me a little bit loopy. I just don't like that feeling. I don't want to put myself in that position. But even as I was doing that, you know, it was this real hard sort of, it's been a real hard couple of days of wanting to, wanting to drink. And it's just like, man, is this ever going to make sense? Is it ever going to follow like a pattern super closely as far as when these things come up, when the session like really ramps up, you know, because I would say, honestly, especially now, you know, just in the amount of sobriety I have, um, like I always, the thoughts always come up. Like the thoughts will actually come up every day. It's usually, it usually takes me a while down of, or a good, good amount of sobriety before I can at least go a day, honestly, without thinking about it. You know, nothing too crazy. Thoughts come up, um, kind of like I can feel it for myself, maybe starting to fantasize about it. And so I kind of knock that away, you know, reach out and talk to somebody about it or just go do something, a, a healthy distraction. Like I said, working out, uh, writing, um, or just, you know, trying to get out in nature, spend some time just outdoors, you know, just all, all those things that usually help me, help my mental well-being, whether I'm thinking about drinking or not. And so maybe it's because I haven't been able to do that. But like I said, I've, I've been through this before and it's not been an issue. And, you know, so like it's just one of those things where even when I try to... Uh, you know, it's more important instead of just expecting this will be like the norm. You know, I, I've been through plenty, like I said, plenty of times where I've had bad days and um, or bigger things happen in my life that I didn't want to drink. But, you know, instead of expecting that to be like, oh, this thing is kind of, fine, you know, tapering down, it will be less intense, it will be less arduous, you know, maybe just 
and just not have any expectations at all. Just be grateful that I've been able to go through hard times and, you know, that wanting to drink or the cravings haven't been there or things like that. Just be grateful of that. And so, you know, like I said, it's just one of those things where, like I said, it doesn't seem like the greatest. You're just like, you know, how, how much do I have to live my life and sort of fear of this happening or just again always be hyper vigilant always having to watch what i'm doing you know as if like i'm on self-induced probation always have to be checking up with my in with myself you know just a lot of these things that just sometimes i just really don't feel like doing it it's important to remember stuff like this so it's just like you know even if you don't feel like doing it or it feels like exhausting i just need to keep doing it and so that's one of the big takeaways that i you know i have you know, I know everybody varies differently, especially when it comes to stuff like that. But I would suggest, I don't often do too much of suggestion and advice, but I would think that that would be a good thing for other people to do, especially in, in early or early-ish sobriety. So, um, you know, like, subscribe if you're watching this. Um, I know I usually have a lot of repeat viewers, which I, I, is great and I'm grateful for. But if you're watching this for the first time and you haven't subscribed, hit the notification bell smash that thing like the liberty bell actually i don't think the liberty bell was smashed i think it just cracked for some reason i don't know someone dropped it um uh, and you know like i said i still have my uh my email at no chaser 2022 at gmail.com that is no chaser at 2022 at gmail.com um, I usually always put it in the description too. And I put it in the description of ways that you can support me if you feel so inclined. Like I said, no pressure or anything like that. And the people that have done it, like have given me supers and, you know, have um, donated just like a little bit of money through YouTube um, just to get a topic or something else like that. You know, if you want to always put a topic in the comments below, if you want me to like, consider doing a, a video about something or something that you think people would find interesting or something I haven't covered before. You know, a lot of times too, I, I won't update with as many videos just because I don't want to repeat myself. Some things are good to go over again, especially if it's been a while, but you know, I'm always looking for new topic ideas. So, um, or if you just have any questions or if you want to share your experience or just reach out with something more, um, uh, personal or more in depth, um, like I said, you can always have that, um, send me something on the no chaser email which is confidential obviously and um that will be in the description as well so um thanks for watching and other than that be well